Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for another one man review. Today I'm going to be looking at the new book from Fantagraphics, No One Else by R. Kikuo Johnson. I, I was going to review both No One Else and uh, his older book, which has just been re-released by Fantagraphics, which is what I have here um, in hardcover, Night Fisher. But I think I want to talk to Sean about Night Fisher. I, I, I was waiting to read both to see if we should talk to, about both together or what to do with that. Um, I've decided that this one I can cover on my own. And that's partly because... I was a little bit disappointed by it. Um, I've been really hype on this book, just from what I've seen online. And then when I read Night Fisher, I was extra hype about the book. And the reason I was so hype is because I've seen this type of art. So s similar to like nowhere near as egregious as the Jerry Moriarty book, I feel like what Fantagraphics advertised was absolutely the strongest work in the book, which, fine, I mean, you know, show the best stuff. Uh, but it felt a bit like I had seen all the hit jokes in the previews. It felt like that type of movie um, promotion in the book. So it's, anyways, I'll go through the book. Um, it's got this fold-out covers. Again, I don't understand that as a design thing. It's just some extra thing that can get messed up. Uh, I don't know what it adds to the book. Uh, it's a nice illustration, though. I mean, always beautiful illustrations. Um, R. Kickwell Johnson is an amazing cartoonist. I don't want to uh, downplay that at all. It's his His style in this book especially is somewhere between, like, Chris Ware pacing and Adrian Tomine Tomini, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um aesthetic and I see a lot of Jaime Hernandez. So those three things come together and I mean really pulls from the best of all of them and does fantastic, fantastic cartooning. So in terms of cartooning and drawing ability and storytelling and pacing like it's this is a phenomenal piece of cartooning and comics and it, you should own it um i found the story to be thin it's slice of life story but it's dealing with such a weighty subject matter and i was able to like breeze through the book in i don't know 20 minutes or something which for a how many pages is this a hundred some odd pages just felt too brief for the subject matter that's being conveyed um it's about this woman here who's a nurse she's living a chaotic life she's got a son she's taking care of her here's her son um, and this is the type of stuff i saw advertised this two color thing and so I was really excited about that. The, the two colors has a purpose. Um, so the fact that the two colors doesn't show up on every page so intensely is fine with me. Uh, I, I kind of like this here uh, where the kid's obviously watching The Lion King, but it looks like Simba the White Lion, the Tezuka character, rather than or not Simba but uh what's his white it, Tezuka's original character that Disney ripped off so I like that that's a little jab at, at Disney there um but the orange that runs through the book it has a purpose so I get why there's not as much with the orange but the father here is obviously suffering from dementia or something like that um and I don't want to give away too much but the the father dies and so it's about the mother and her brother shows up, the, the child's uncle, and they're dealing with the death of their father. Given that, it feels just like these little hollow glimpses. And, I mean, I, I, I really like this kind of comic. Um, it's not like it's a kind of comic that I don't like. You know, these very quiet... I mean, I actually intend to be my next comic. I want to have a lot of moments like this. Um, almost entirely moments like this and and I love like Walking Man and comics like that but it just felt 
hollow for the subject matter. Maybe that's the point. Like, maybe there's this devastating thing going on where someone in the family dies. Oh, and the cat goes missing. And so they're looking for the cat and these things kind of intertwine. Um, maybe that's the point, is that through all of the devastation, you still have these quiet moments. But I don't know, it just didn't add up for me. And a lot of what I saw being advertised was this more dynamic imagery. These really great, I mean, fantastic illustrator. And this two-color thing that I found to be really appealing in all of the images I saw online. They, they showed a couple images like this. But I was just under the impression that there was going to be more of the intense imagery. And there's, let me see if I can find... A couple pages. Um, there's a couple. I, I like this scene. The kid peeing. But there's a lot of that. Like I like that stuff. But if you're going to do that. I feel like it's got to be a bigger book. To deal with the subject of a death in the family. Um, it just didn't didn't add up to much to me. Like by the end of it. It was like okay. I checked in and I checked out. But then there's these scenes like this. That are stunning. And I just feel like if this book was two or three times as long, there could have been more of this. This stuff could have been more impactful in a way. Where are these? There's a couple. Th these. I mean, you just hit these and they're so impactful. And and it's nice to have that, that slow pacing with all of a sudden these super impactful images. Um, I don't know, but it's just like the kid dreaming, I think, or the cat running away. But it looks like the kid dreaming. And they don't narratively add up to much. I mean, maybe if I really went back and looked and tried, it would feel like it. But it, I don't know. It just it felt austere and serene and like the way the art works. And like I said, I love plenty of art like that. I love Jaime Hernandez. I love Adrian Tomine. Tomini. I love Chris Ware. Um, here they're using the color change for memory, so it, it's all of a sudden doing something that it hasn't been doing. I know it's lighter orange, but the orange seems to key in on important, intense moments, and then it's thrown in here real quick that seems not to carry much story significance. The orange is always, always significant to the story, like that orange blanket's really significant. Um, and then I don't mind showing the ending because the ending's just like abrupt. Like the kid just throws up and you get the orange again. So I don't know. It, it was a little bit disappointing. It was another one of these things where I feel like Fantagraphics knew that it would have people more hype about it. If they were showing this kind of imagery and I saw a lot of that, it's not that I didn't see this. It's just I got the impression that the majority of the book was something along these lines. Um, and that's not what it is. Still a good book. I still recommend buying it, flipping through it, uh, learning what you can about composition. I mean, just beautiful. Every composition is perfect. The cartooning, the, the clean lines of it. Uh, all of that's fantastic. But narratively compared to Night Fisher and compared to what the story itself suggests that it's going to be covering, I just found it to not say as much as it could have or not say as much as I wanted to. Uh, and then some of the formal tricks like having the two colors and the orange, I don't know that that really drove home the point that it was supposed to drive home. Um, like the orange seems to be a key of, like a key to intense things, things that symbolically intense, but then you'll have it in these moments where it doesn't really matter. Like it just feels like a gimmick to have it on the the light or to lighten it down and use it for memory. It works, it's effective, but it kind of diminishes the symbolic effect of the orange. Having it on that stoplight seems to, diminish it as an important thing so i don't know i i feel i try and look at work like what is the work trying to do and take my taste out of it and this fits into my taste i like it i like the look of it 
but I don't think it did what it was trying to do. Unless it was trying to say that while all this tragic stuff happens, like it doesn't necessarily have to be deep. <laughs> like the life just kind of goes on with these small inconsequential moments within the consequential moments. That could be kind of interesting. Um, but I don't know. Like it would be nice to have a line of dialogue that I remember, you know, something where they really punched me in the gut with a realization about life with some wisdom. Um, yeah, something like that. So, recommend it for the cartooning and the art. Don't be too excited about the story. Uh, I'd be curious to see if other people have other impressions of what this was doing, something that I'm missing out on because I really want to like the book. But, uh, not going to review this one. Hopefully we'll talk to Sean about it. Would highly recommend... Night Fisher by R. Kikua Johnson, and you say I have a bunch of notes and stuff, and it's stuff that excited me to talk about. So, still a cartoonist I'm, I'm really excited about. Thanks for joining along. Take it away, Jack.